When I got out of prison 28 years ago, I told the men that I would do something. I would, I would do something to help them. I didn't know what it was. It became clear to me a year and a half after I was released from prison that what God wanted me to do was to serve in the prisons and to stay doing it. That was the promise I made when I got out of prison to the Lord. I said, I'll do something to bring Christ back into these prisons. And I've tried to be faithful to that call and to continue to bring the gospel to prisoners. One of the things that really stands out in my mind about Prison Fellowship International is that it's probably the most cost-effective ministry in the world. We get more ministry done with less resources. And I think it's because so many people uh, have been, have caught the vision. We're going into the bowels of society among the forgotten and lost people. Those society has written off. We can't do this except through the local church. And we work with all the churches across the board all those churches that love Jesus and want to bring the gospel to prisons work together to come into those prisons. You're getting all kinds of people involved as a volunteer movement that has a great power. I mean, this is a tremendously powerful movement because it's a people movement. At the heart of what we do is men and women to come to know Jesus. That's the greatest gift we can give anyone that they can have a new life in Christ, that they in that prison, broken, forgotten, cast off by society, they can come to Christ and be transformed and be renewed. People can see visibly the transformation in the lives of those people. They come out of prison and instead of going back in, these people stay out, their lives are changed, they're glorious witnesses. I would have to say with um, every bit of conviction I can muster that among the most uh, dedicated Christians I've ever met are those in prison. I never ever forget the time I was in the humiliated prison in Brazil and uh, one of the men in, the, in that prison, it was such a joyous spirit. He said, would you like to see the maximum security cells, the lockup cells? And I said, yeah, I would. And so he said, you sure you want to? They're a pretty tough place. It was an old torture cells in the prison. I said, yeah, I got impatient with him. I said, come on, let's go. So we walked down this long corridor, get to the last door in the corridor, and he puts the key in and he starts to open the door and he said, he's in there. It's all right? And I said, yeah, it's all right. And he swung the door open and walked in and here was a chair and a table and a vase and on the wall a crucifix, Christ hanging on the cross. And this inmate looked at that cross and he said, that's Jesus. He's the prisoner in this cell doing the time for us. And I've never forgotten the power of that because people in churches on the outside don't have the same intimate grasp of what that relationship with Jesus is that so many of those inmates do. So um, you ask me why I'm here for Easter tomorrow in the prison, because I love it. Because you can feel the presence of Christ and you feel the power of the Holy Spirit and you see people who have lost everything in this world and have the greatest and most precious gift of all, Jesus. And I would say to my brothers and sisters around the world, be faithful, be steadfast. It takes a long time to change the way people think about things. But the more they see prison fellowship working, the more the different cultures around the, the world see the power of the gospel demonstrated among the least of these, the people who are the outcasts of society, uh, the more we're seeing the impact of that affecting life outside of the prison. So be steadfast. It's a mission field that God has called us to, and great movements start from the bottom up. And this movement is a great movement starting from the bottom up. Be steadfast. Keep faithful to God's call.